Hello, everyone watching at home. This is Mr. Minnick. Math's my name. No, math's not my name. Mr. Minnick's my name. Math is my game. I'm so excited. I can't even talk because I've got a new microphone today. Um, and I can actually walk around the room. And if anybody wants to say something into the mic, I can make that happen. So I don't know. Maybe we'll have some volunteers to do that. So uh, today we're looking at Chapter 8, Section 6. This is the old book, but the old book, new book, it's the same thing. Solving rational equations. Um, I could give you a, a, a few algorithms, a few procedures, a few notes, but I'm, I think I'm going to A, talk about proportion solving, and then we'll just look at some examples. Sound like a winner? Okay. So proportion solving. Um, I don't know if you know this about proportions or not. Uh, proportions are something like A over B equals C over D, right? If you have a proportion like that and you need to solve it, I think from seventh grade, maybe even sixth grade, or a science class, or geometry, or algebra one, you probably remember what you have to do to solve a proportion. Cross multiply. So what happens then is you find the cross product, A times D is AD, Okay. And then the other cross product would be uh, B times C, and that's BC. And the deal with the proportion is the cross products are equal, and that's why you can cross multiply to solve that. Um, suppose you wanted to get the A all by itself. I don't know why, but suppose you wanted to get the A all by itself. You would divide by D and divide by D. So, so we could rewrite this as A is equal to BC over D. Is everybody following what I just, just did there? Okay. So A could be thought of as, as BC over D. Well, suppose that I wanted to get D all by itself. If I wanted to get D all by itself, I would divide by A. So if I divided by A and divided by A, um, D would be BC over A, right? Got him. Okay, we got that one. Um, well, what if we wanted to get B all by itself? What if we wanted to get B all by itself? We would divide by C. So could we write B? Could we write B as uh, AD over C? Could we do that? Okay. Let's do this one more time. Let's let's try to get the uh, let's try to get uh, C by itself because that's the only one we didn't yet. If we got C by itself, we'd have to divide by what? B. So C would equal um, A D over B. A D over B. How's everybody doing so far? Okay. So what I what I want to kind of go over is 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 something that you probably have never seen with proportions. Okay. So let me see if this if this is going to work. Uh, grouping, ungroup. I don't know if any of your pre previous teachers have shown you this, but in a proportion, any of the terms in there can move along the diagonal. And when I say move along the diagonal, I mean B that's in the bottom left here. Let's just look at the top here. B that's in the bottom left, it can actually slide up right beside the C. And the C could actually slide down along that diagonal down there. Okay, so in thinking about that, if we needed to get A all by itself, we would just slide the B up here. So A is BC over D, and that's exactly what we saw right here, right? We doing all right so far? Okay, so let's try that little, little idea of moving things around, and let's see if we can't get B all by itself. So to get B by itself, we'd have to slide B up here. We'd have to slide C down here. But B's not by itself. But D can move along the diagonal. So D's going to slide up here, right? And so B then could be thought of as AD over C. B, where is it? B is AD over C, right? So, again, if we could try this with all the different combinations. If we wanted D by itself, D would slide up to here. A would drop down to here. And the C would have to slide up there, right? So D is BC over A. Do we see the way that works visually, I hope? Okay. 
<laughs> That's one interesting thing about proportions. Proportions are so awesome. Um, in a proportion, if the numerators are equal, then the denominators are equal. In a proportion, if the numerators are equal, then the denominators are equal. So what I mean by that is this. If we had an equation like 6 over x equals 6 over 10, you would probably cross multiply to solve it. So let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. We're thinking x is 10. You're right, x is 10. But watch what happens if you cross multiply. If you cross multiply, you get 6x equals 6 times 10, right? So what would you have to do to get x alone? Divide by 6. You would divide by 6 and divide by 6. Well, that cancels that, and so x is 10. So one thing to think about is in a proportion, if the numerators are equal, the denominators are equal. You probably never knew that, did you? Now, we could do this three more times, actually. In a proportion, if the denominators are equal, then the numerators, then the numerators are equal. So let's look at something like this. Let's look at x squared over 17 equals 9 over 17. So if we had something like that, you would probably cross multiply and you get 17x squared equals whatever 17 times 9 is. But how would you get x squared all by itself? We're going to have to divide by 17, and we divide by 17, and the 17s cancel. So we would get uh, x squared equals 9, and then we could solve it from there, right? So I don't know if you had known those things about proportions or not before, but, but that right there is going to come in real handy in tonight's exercises. It, is it going to get a lot harder from this point on? Remember when we had to add and subtract rational expressions yesterday and the day before? We're going to have to do that to solve some of these. Because rational, rational equations, the trick to solving them is to get a proportion. Okay? If I had to sum up the notes in one step, it would be get a proportion. That's the goal because we can solve proportions, right? Okay. There's one more time we're going to do this. If the numerator equals the denominator on one side, on one side, then the numerator, then the numerator equals the denominator on the other side. Okay. So what I mean by that is this. If we had something like um, 8 over 8 equals x over 6, then let's see what happens. You would cross multiply and you would get x times 8 or 8x equals 8 times 6. And what would you do? You would divide by 8, you would divide by 8, and so you'd get x equals 6. So hopefully you gotta kinda have an idea how to solve proportions, eh? So I think now that we have an understanding of how proportions get solved, I think that we're just about ready to start, eh? And I'm not from Canada for the record. I'd like to give a shout out to the future Mr. Minnick. I'd like to give a shout out to everyone who wore purple today. Okay, here's our first example. I don't know if you can see it. If you can't, I'm going to go ahead and write this a little bit bigger. We've got 3 over x plus 1. That's equal to 9 over 4x plus 5. I know people are good at the distributive property, but sometimes we forget about it. We forget to distribute on something like this. You do have to use the distributive property when you multiply. So this first cross product here, we do need to multiply 3 by both the 4x and by the 5. We do need to use the distributive property there. So what are we going to get out of that cross product? 12x plus 5 
plus 15. Where'd the 15 come from? Well, the 15's from the three times the five. Okay. Again, use a distributive property there. We doing all right so far? Good. The next cross product is going to equal, uh, we got to multiply 9 by x, which of course is 9x, and 9 multiplied by 1 is um, 9. So there we go. Once we have done that, this is real simple. All we're doing is solving a linear equation. Um, you learned how to do these in Algebra 1. Uh, get all the x's on one side. What side should we put the x's on, the left or the right? I'd put them on the left. To the left, to the left. So we subtract 9x, we subtract 9x, so we get 3x plus 15 equals 9. Now what do we do? Subtract 15 from both sides. So we subtract 15, subtract 15, so we get 3x equals negative 6. But we're trying to get x all by itself, so what do we do now? x equals negative 2, how'd you get that? Oh, we, get, we divide by 3, divide by 3, so we get x equals negative 2. Bam, we're done. That's it. That's not bad. Once you have a proportion, these are really simple, right? That's the idea, though. You have to have a proportion to start with, okay? And sometimes you're not going to have one. All right. Let's move on to, I remember the silver problem. I'm not, I'm not even going to mess with it. Let's, let's move on to one like that. <laughs> so one like this is a little bit intimidating at first because we don't have a proportion. However, however, we could get one really simply if we just think about what we did yesterday. So let me copy this a little bit bigger. 5 over x plus 7 over 4 equals negative 9 over x. Now, to add fractions, we need common denominators, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but this term and this term both have the same denominator, don't they? So I need to put them together, and I need to be real careful when I do it. I could either bring, and when I say bring, I mean add to both sides. I could either bring this negative 9x over here, but if I do that, then I'm not going to have a proportion, right? Um, wait for it. That blue marker is going to go away any second. There it goes. What if I take this 5 over x, though, and I put it on that side of the equation? Will that give me a proportion? That'll give me a proportion, right? And then I could cross multiply. So let's see what happens. So we're going to be subtracting. We're going to be subtracting 5 over x. We're going to be subtracting 5 over x from both sides. So when we do that, 7 fourths will remain 7 fourths. But what do we get when we take negative 9 over x, take away 5 more over x, negative 14 over x? Everybody cool with that? Good. So we get negative 14 over x. And now we can just take care of this proportion. You know, there's a there's an interesting way to, to look at proportions. I don't know if you've ever seen this. I don't know if any of your other teachers have ever shown you this, but let's just examine for a minute the top here. If we go from the left side of the top to the right side of the top, we're kind of multiplying by negative 2, right? So if we want to go from this 4 over to that x, we would need to do the same thing, the way proportional laws work. What I'm saying is in the numerator, to go from here to here, we'd need to multiply by negative 2. Down here, it's the same thing. We'd need to multiply by negative 2. So I'm thinking the answer to this is actually negative 8. Let's see if I'm right. 7x equals, uh, 780x uh, equals what? Negative 56. And so we divide by 7. And so x equals negative 8. Did you see the way I analyzed that proportion? I don't know if you ever knew or thought to solve them like that before. We've got a question. If you go, if you go negative 14 times 4 divided by 7, yeah, it's the same thing. 
is is it much simpler? It's, it's simpler is a matter of perspective. Uh, it's it's a subjective thing. Some people, when they make chocolate chip cookies, some people think it's simpler to go to the store and buy that four dollar and ninety nine cent tub. Well, some people already have brown sugar, white sugar, butter, eggs, vanilla, and flour at home already. And some people have made chocolate chip cookies so many times from scratch that they could do that. But when they go to the store, they don't have a license, so they can't drive to the store. So what do they have to do? They have to ride their bike. And their bike's got a flat tire and a rusted chain. So they need to fix the chain on their bike. They need to WD-40 it. And then they need to pump up the tire. And they use the air compressor that has 120 pounds of shop air in it. And they blow the tires. So now they don't have a tube. Now their tube is, is disintegrated. So, so, so to answer your question, however you feel most comfortable solving, I don't, I don't mind which way you solve proportions as long as you can. Okay. Okay. Now, I do have a disclaimer about this. At the end of this, I'm going to show you something that I shouldn't show you because you'll never solve equations the same ever again. Ever. So we think the answer to this is... Uh, what did we say it was? Negative 8? So the answer is B. Okay. Any questions so far? Any, any other questions? It seems to be way too easy, doesn't it? Oh! 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 One minus some things equals something. We don't have a proportion yet, so we can't cross multiply, but we could We could easily get a proportion. I love that attitude. That's terrific. That's exactly what we need to think. So this one, I think it would be real easy to put this one either with this or with this, because one's easy to work with, isn't it? It is a good one. Now, now what if we make one... What if we make 1x over x, and then we could put it with this, right? What if we made 1x minus 5 over x minus 5? Then couldn't we put it with that? You think to put, to put the 1 with this? Now, are we going to leave um, the 3x on the right? Because if, if we do, then we have a negative to do something with, and that negative can really kind of screw things up. If we do that, what I would suggest, if we do that, I would suggest bringing this over here and bringing this term over here to get rid of that negative sign, because negative signs really screw things up bad. Does everybody see what I'm talking about there, I hope? Let's try it that way and see what happens. So we need to make 1x over x instead, right? So 1, let's rewrite it as x over x. Um, we have to make the assumption that x isn't 0, by the way. Um, I need to make that disclaimer. So, so we would be subtracting. Let me use a, a unique color here. We're going to subtract 3 over x from both sides. So what do we get on the left? x over x take away 3 over x. What's that going to give us? x over x take away 3 over x. Think about what we did yesterday. It's going to be something over x. It's not going to be a single thing in the top. It's going to be a binomial. Thank you. X minus 3. X minus 3 in the numerator. Okay. Now, I did say we're going to take that other term, the negative 8 over X minus 5. We're going to put that whole other term on the other side. When we put it on the other side of the equation, we're adding it to both sides, and the negative's going to go away, and that's the idea there. So when we do that, instead of being negative 8 over X minus 5, it's going to be positive 8 over x minus 5, because I really don't like that negative in there, okay? It can really screw things up. Everybody cool so far? I smell a quadratic in our future. Remember chapter 4? Remember chapter 5? Remember factoring? I bet you're going to have to do that. When we find the first cross product, we're going to be foiling x minus 3 and x minus 5. We're going to be foiling. So what's that first cross product going to give us? x squared minus 
8x, awesome, plus 15. And then the other cross product is quite simple. The other cross product is 8x. Now, we know how to solve quadratics, I hope, by this point. We get everything equal to zero, we factor, and then we see what happens. Minus 8x, minus 8x. So x squared take away 16x plus 15 equals zero. Meow. Does 15 have factors that add up to negative 16? Sure it does. X, X, 1, 15, both are negative, right? So we believe that X is going to equal... Here's where we use the zero product property. X minus 1 equals zero, so we believe that X equals 1. X minus 15 equals zero, so we believe X equals 15. We think that this has got two answers. It might have two. It might not. I don't know. I really, I honestly don't. What do you have to do? Plug it back in and see what happens. So let's plug in a one and see if that works. Let's test to see if one satisfies this. One minus eight over one minus five. Is that equal to three over one? I don't know, but we're about to find out. That works. That's going to be one minus Eight over negative four, that's equal to three. That's one. Hey, wait a minute. What's eight over negative four? Isn't that negative two? So that's one minus minus two. Is that equal to three? That's plus. So three equals three. So one is one of the solutions. Right? Okay. Well, what did we think the other one was? Fifteen? So we think 15 works. 1 minus 8 over 15 minus 5. We want to know, is that equal to 3 over 15? I don't know if this one works or not. That's 1 minus 8 over 10. Is that 3 over 15? Um, um, did I plug that in right? Did I set that up right? That's going to be um, that's going to be one. Oh, well, one minus eight tenths is two tenths, right? And two tenths is one fifth. And three fifteenths does that reduce down to one fifth? It actually does. Ah! So both answers are right. So x does equal fifteen, and x does equal one. Look at that. I know what somebody's thinking. That's it? They gotta get harder than this. Did you get that <laughs> Extraneous solutions. I've got a real gross way of explaining it. I don't know if anybody remembers what I was talking about when I explained extraneous solutions. Extraneous solutions are like the byproduct of some algebra. You do some stuff and some some weird answers show up, and sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. So I didn't say it's poop. I said it's um, something else that starts with a P. has to do with babies. Anyway, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Oh, I, I love this one. This one's awesome. Who can, who can read my mind and tell me which two fractions I'm going to combine? Yes, these two here. I'm going to combine this one with this one. But before I do, before I do, I'm going to multiply each one by something. Now, I really wish, I really wish you all had this technology in your notebook because you're going to get mad when I cut this out. Well, you might not get mad, but I'm going to cut this out like that. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I'm going to work with that. Okay, what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to multiply this fraction by x minus 3 over x minus 3, and I'm going to multiply this fraction by x plus 3 over x plus 3. Now, you might think to yourself, self, that's way too much work. I'm not going to do that. 
And at the end of this, I promise to show you something, and you're never going to solve equations the same way ever again. Promise. So let's see what happens. Uh, we use the distributive property. What do we get? 6x plus 18. Now what's the denominator going to be? The denominator is going to be x squared plus 3x minus 3x minus 9. What happens with the plus 3x minus 3x? They cancel. So what's my denominator going to be? x squared minus... Hey! Hey, isn't that denominator the same thing that we have on the other side? So remember that little trick that I told you with the denominators, if they're equal, then the numerators are equal? Do you see how we're setting it up for that? Okay. So let's see what happens on the right here. Let's distribute this. What's that going to be? 4x times x is uh, 4x squared minus 12x. Good. Now, what's the denominator there? What's the denominator there? x squared minus 9. Good. x squared minus 9. Okay, and you might say, well, what happened to that other thing? Well, the other thing didn't change just yet. 8x squared over x squared minus 9. Is everybody doing all right so far? This is going to be awesome. Look, everything on the right can be combined, can't it? Everything on the right can actually be combined. What I mean by that is we can, uh, we could, we can go ahead and those have the same denominator, right? So on the left, we're still going to have the 6x plus 18 over x squared minus 9. What are we going to get on the right? We have 8x squared. We're going to be taking away 4x. We're not going to have 12x squared. We have 8x squared. We're taking away 4x squared. So we're going to have 4x squared. How would you get plus 12x? It is, my, it is plus 12x. How would you get 12x, though? Because it's a minus a minus, right? So then it's going to be plus 12x. And the denominator is x squared minus 9. And let's back that thing up for a minute if you forgot. If you forgot, we said a long time ago in a land far away, if the denominators are equal, then we can just set the numerators equal, right? So what I mean by that is, and this problem that we're dealing with now, we can kind of disregard the denominators and go ahead and set 6x plus 18 equal to, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shove that on the other side if you don't mind, 6x plus 18 is equal to 4x squared plus 12x. How's everybody doing so far? All right. I know I skipped a couple steps there, but I don't want this to take up too much room on my paper. I smell factoring. So let's see, 4x squared. Uh, how many x's are we going to end up with on the left? How about plus 6x? And then what? And then when we bring the 18 over, minus 18, thank you, equals 0. Can we factor anything out of all those even numbers? Probably what? A 2. So let's factor out a 2 and see what happens. That's going to be 2x squared plus 3x minus 9. That's going to make this a lot easier to factor. The 2 at this point doesn't really affect my solution, so I can kind of disregard it. We did this stuff in Chapter 4, okay? So I'm not doing anything new here. If we try to factor the, uh, let's see, we're going to get a 2x, we're going to get an x, and 9's only got two pairs of factors, right? 9 and 1 or 3 and 3? What should we try first? I think the 3 and 3 is going to get it done. If we go 3 here, 3 here, the outer product 6x, I'm going to make that positive. The inner product 3x, I'm going to make that negative. And I almost got the answer. The answer is, so 2x minus 3 is 0, so 2x is 3, so we think x is what? Uh, 3 over 2, and then x plus 3 equals 0, so x equals negative 3, 
So we think, we think that those are our answers. That's what we think. <laughs> uh, I really don't want to plug those back in and check. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. I'm just going to, do you mind if I just move the answer box? Because it's going to tell me what the answer is. Do you mind if I just do that? It tells us x equals 3 halves or x equals negative 3. But the solution is 3 halves. It might be simple to spot why the negative 3 doesn't work. The reason the negative 3 doesn't work has to do with right there. Has to do with that. That's why, whoop, well, that's why the negative 3 doesn't work. The negative 3 doesn't work because what would happen if we plugged negative 3 into that part of the original equation? It'd be 0. And what happens if we have 0 in a denominator? It's undefined, right? So if we plugged in the negative 3 into that part of the original equation, we would have an undefined situation, and that's why the negative 3 doesn't work. What do we think about this? Do we get the general idea? Now, I did tell you. What about the x minus 9? The x squared minus 9 would become a 0, too. You're right. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to create an undefined situation. Nice call. Good. So let me fire up my TI Inspire. I, I can't believe I'm showing you this. I really shouldn't show you this. I will warn you, though, what I'm about to show you has the potential to only get you half the answer, or even sometimes a third of the answer. If you solve a quadratic equation, how many answers could there be? There could be two, right? If you solve a cubic, how many answers could there be? Three. What I'm about to show you is something that math teachers across the world can't stand. Because some students rely on it and don't learn how to solve equations using sound principles, and they just use this. I'm not saying this is wrong. I'm not saying don't use it, but I'm saying make sure you can solve these equations without relying solely on this method. So let's go all the way back to the beginning, to example number one. You ready? I'm going to write it down so I have it. 3 over x plus 1 equals 9 over 4x plus 5. You want to pay special close attention on this. You ready? So the TI Inspire is a very powerful calculator. It's kind of like a, a Can-Am Renegade 1000. If you're into ATVs, you know what that is. Um, I love ATVs. K&M Renegade 1000, you can be riding along on this four-wheel drive ATV at 50 miles an hour. And if you move to the back of the seat and stab the throttle, the four-wheeler will wheelie, and you can ride a wheelie while going 50 miles an hour on this thing. It's insane. It's a lot of power. The TI Inspire is kind of like that in that it has a lot of power. It can do a lot of things. With Great power comes great responsibility, though. So if I go to the menu, what class are we in right now? We're in calculus? No, we're not in calculus. What class are we in? We're in algebra. So if I go to algebra, do you see the very first option that this calculator has? It says numerical solve. When I go ahead and click that, watch what it pastes to the home screen. To a calculator page, it says end solve. You can actually just type in nsolve if you wanted to. Maybe you forget about the menu. You could type nsolve, and the calculator recognizes this is a command. This is something I will do for you. I will numerically solve an equation for you. Tell me what it is. So the equation is, the equation is this. I need a left parenthesis. The equation is a fraction of 3 over 
x plus 1. That is equal to 9 over x plus 4, so another fraction, 9 over x plus 4. And there is one more step to this. If you just do that, the calculator is going to give you an error. It's going to say, variable not assigned. It is going to say you're stupid. It's going to say you don't know what you're doing. It's kind of like that, that renegade when you, um, well, anyway. It says too few arguments. You're missing something. We're telling it to solve, but we didn't tell it what to solve for. What do we want to solve it for? For x. To tell it that, to tell it for, for we put a comma after the equation. So inside the parentheses, we put a comma. And to tell it we want it to solve it for x, we just put an x. Watch. You ready? Bam. 0.5. What was our answer? Oh, did I type in the equation right? Oh, I typed in the equation wrong. My bad. It might help if I put the right equation in. The denominator was 4x plus 5. Sorry about that. The denominator was 4x plus 5, and there it is, negative 2. What do you think? Let's try. Let's try the next one. Let's try this one. Uh, 5 over x. Hopefully somebody has this in their notes. They can read it off to me. So in solve, what's the equation? 5 over x plus 7 fourths equals negative 9 over x. And I want to solve that for x. Negative 8 is the answer. Negative 8 is the answer. Whoa. Now, I did tell you that this has the potential to not get you all the answers. So let's look at example four here. Watch this one. And solve. What did example four's equation look like? Uh, so one minus eight over x minus five equals, equals three over x equals 3 over x. Let's solve this for x, and watch what happens. Remember, we got two answers there, right? Did I put in the, was that the whole equation? Um, 1 minus 8 over x minus 5 equals 3 over x. The calculator tells me that the answer is 1. What the heck happened? 1 minus 8 over x minus 5 equals 3 over x, and the calculator gives us an answer of 1. Scratching my head. Wait a minute. 1 minus 8 over x minus 5 equals 3 over x. Solve for x. And it says 1. If we plugged in a 1, we get, what? no, what? does 1 work there? Was 1 one of the answers? No, yeah, 1 was one of the answers. 1 was one of the answers. 1 worked, but 1 fifth was also one of the answers, wasn't it? So it only got us half the answer. So am I saying not to use this? No. Am I saying rely solely on this? I'm not saying that either, okay? This is a valuable tool. Don't abuse it, okay? Any questions, comments, concerns? Any shout-outs to anybody else? Shout-out to who? Will Duvall. All right. Well, it's been real. It's been fun. Have a great day. See you next time.